Hi, I'm Emma Lewis. I'm the Research and Development Engineer here at Applied Thermal Control. Today we're going to go through the KT1 fridge system and its mainline components. It's a one kilowatt fridge system and is made up of a compressor, condenser, evaporator and expansion valve. We'll look at the main components of the system first. This is a reciprocating compressor with a suction line and a discharge line. Through the discharge line, the compressor produces hot high pressure vapour and it passes through the discharge line into the top of the condenser. This is an air cooled condenser and as the fan rotates, air is sucked through the condenser and the hot high pressure vapour becomes hot high pressure liquid. From the bottom of the condenser, the liquid refrigerant flows through a filter dryer, a solenoid valve and a thermostatic expansion valve where the high pressure refrigerant turns into a cooler lower pressure liquid. As the refrigerant enters the evaporator, heat energy is exchanged from our customer's application fluid to the refrigerant. This causes the refrigerant state to change into a low pressure vapour before it leaves the evaporator and returns back to the suction line of the compressor. The first component that we will look at in a little more detail is the solenoid valve. Every chiller with a PID controller has one of these. It either allows full flow or blocks all flow of refrigerant into the thermostatic expansion valve. When the PID controller determines that the refrigeration system needs more cooling effect, it opens the valve and when the PID determines that the system does not need more cooling, it leaves it closed. The next component is the thermostatic expansion valve. This component is made of two parts, the first being the body of the valve and the second being the bulb. The body of the valve contains an insert or an orifice. As the hot high pressure refrigerant enters the valve, it goes through the orifice still under pressure from the compressor and as it forces its way through the orifice the pressure drops and so does the temperature. This allows for cooler refrigerant to pass through into the evaporator. This component is controlled by the bulb. The bulb is strapped onto the suction line of the compressor. It controls a small charge of refrigerant which rests inside the capillary tube which drives the insert up and down and allows the flow of refrigerant through the thermostatic expansion valve. The point in the system where a customer's fluid meets ATC's refrigerant system is at the heat exchanger or evaporator. We pass refrigerant through the evaporator from the bottom, it changes state and leaves via the top. At the same time, the fluid that we pump into our customer's application is passed into the top of the evaporator it is then pumped down, removing heat energy, and leaves out of the bottom of the evaporator. Every chiller has a form of capacity modulation. The type that we use is known as hot gas bypass. When the temperature probe in the chiller that is attached to the PID controller senses that cooling is no longer needed, the solenoid valve is instructed to close. The compressor suction line then begins to draw a vacuum through the evaporator up to the closed solenoid valve. When the pressure in the line reaches a predefined value, the hot gas bypass valve opens. It then draws hot gas from the discharge line into the suction line. This action prevents damage to the compressor and heats up the application fluid. In terms of safety, every chiller has a high pressure switch. This particular item opens at 19 bar and resets at 17 bar. Situations that might cause the pressure switch to trigger are a blocked condenser, so there may be debris in between the fins. It could also be a failed fan motor or if the fridge system is being run at a particularly high ambient temperature. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you found it useful. If you require any more help or support from ATC, please feel free to contact us at the factory via our website, which is www.app-therm.com.